Hello everyone, my name is Kadari Summer, aka Positive Pablo, founder of Makes Everyone Happy, the positive lifestyle clothing brand, and this is AMP, where art meets philosophy. Today, the wonderful people at the City Arts Factory have allowed us to use the gallery for today's interview, and here I am today with... Nice guy, Daryl. All right, and uh, as always, oh man, uh, <laughs> let's start with the name of this piece. I mean, I love the colors, I love how vivid and detailed it is, but uh, what's the name of this one? The name of this piece is called uh, Out of the Streets, Into the Forest. It's actually um, a, poor, a poem I've been working on, and okay. um, it's actually a seven part poem. Seven parts, and this is part one. Okay, all right. Yeah. And uh, actually, this part right here is about a little boy mm -hmm. basically leaving the environment he is at as of right now, mm -hmm. and all the struggles he's going, in, um, been going through, and going straight into uh, the forest. And what I mean by the forest is, I technically mean like until like the vast expense of everything and like like okay. he's leaving you know the nest of life mm -hmm. and he's going on with his life yeah. and he's doing it such at a young age too so so in a sense like the forest is kind of growing up in the sense of maybe like he's well, leaving high school or he's just transitioning from that safety net mm -hmm. maybe of the streets or is it more so is he leaving a particular environment maybe one that's not as favorable as far as the streets or he's leaving what he knows in the forest is just the massiveness that is everything else. The funny thing about life is that everything kind of happens at once. Okay. So, like, regardless if you're in a bad area or regardless of what you're doing in life, you know, usually everything happens at once. You know, life is not something in which, you know, is waiting for a certain, you know, point in your life where this thing is going to happen or this thing is going to happen, this one thing. It just gives you everything at one time. Okay. And unfortunately for this boy, he's in an environment as of right now where he can't truly be himself. Okay. And so he's trying to understand himself as a person and as a young man in general. And the whole process of him understanding himself is something very, very complex. And this is where all this earth and all this, you know, I, I like to create things that are, you know, um, in a sense, how can I say, uh, in a sense that uh, it's abnormal. Okay. But you've seen it before. I'll say that. Like you've seen trees before, you've seen mm -hmm. nature before, you've seen things like this before, but you've never seen it in this type of uh, perspective. So what I like to create is I like to give you a sense of something you recognize, mm -hmm. like the earth, right. a boy, but in a whole not in this context. Yeah, exactly. As far as everything you said, like everything happens at once. Is this in the sense of if the forest represents everything and he's kind of emerging, he's going into the forest and as he goes into it, everything is also emerging from the self. Yeah, exactly. Think of it like this. When it comes down to the forest, the forest represents the body. Okay. So when I say out of the streets into the forest, out of what everybody else deemed as normality, this individual, his normality is within himself. Okay. So he's breaking out of that normality and becoming something way different. But it may seem different to, to other another. people. Everyone has their own level of normal. Exactly. So yeah, everyone is weird, everyone is normal, everybody has their own center or that's what makes an uh, individual or you know gives them that unique aspect because you're all, we all, we're all on our own journey mm -hmm. through life. So we all have our own level of what is to be or what your own individual occurrences and happenings and understanding is going to be. Exactly. Exactly. And I feel like um, when I create in general, it's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. It's all based off of uh, experiences. Okay. It's all based off of meeting other people, you know, listening to other people's stories, um, my individual story. It's like the path of when I was a child and you know, I would watch cartoons and watch different type of stuff and how I grew from that child who just watched to that child who created and that man it created something different. Mm -hmm. So that's what everything is about. What I believe uh, has been very, very comfortable with me is I go on inside the art world and I meet people and I talk to people and I try to gauge them and learn about them. Okay. More so, you know, trying to push my, you know, immediate in general. But uh, yeah, and that's kind of what I've been doing this whole time. I'm just really trying to get a sense of myself. Mm -hmm. And a lot of weird things that's been happening lately. So yeah, I'm so really you've been finding you've been really finding yourself in your artwork. Oh yes, of course. What do you think? What do you think your art 
voice is? Like, what do you want your art to speak to people when, after you've made it? Because I mean, I know, of course, when you made it, it was speaking to yourself, but once you decide that I'm going to show this piece, or I'm going to sell this piece, or I'm going to put this piece out into the world, what do you think the general gist is? Like, what do you want people to take away from it? What I want somebody to take away from it? First and foremost, you don't, you don't have to be like others. Okay. Individuality? Individuality. You have to become comfortable with yourself. What would you say, what's your, what's the biggest influence of your art? My biggest influence? Mm -hmm. I think my biggest influence, to be honest, is actually my nephew. Um, okay. right. It's pretty weird because uh, I was kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, me and my, like, my brother, uh, we was going through all over the place. We were being really, really wild back in the day. And I feel like once my nephew was born, a lot of things changed. So. And then, uh, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about me being that person and me changing and my brother changing and a lot of people changing around me. So I honestly think that my nephew was like one of my biggest influences right now. Was it, did your nephew kind of show you a simpler way of life in the sense of, is that what it was? Maybe just being around like adults and people your age and trying to figure it out and then you see something come into the world. It's like a, a, a great deal of responsibility, but then as your nephew's growing and going through life, and you're seeing like things could be so, things can be so easy. Like things could be so stress-free, so, so it's, simple. Exactly. I've noticed once he was born, things are not what they seem. I mean, I learned about decisions and what decisions really mean in life. Uh, I mean, when he was, when I first, met, uh, when we first saw him, I felt, I honestly felt like, uh, it was like a weight lifted up, you know, showing me that I could still be myself, I could still do what I want, but now it's not all about you anymore, you know. Now it's about this young, you know, young child, this young man, right? Watching him grow up, and me and my brother, we never, we like honestly, we didn't have that growing up. Mm -hmm. So to be in a position where I'm watching him, I'm like, wow, man. I mean, this is entertaining. This is fun. I like being around this kid. Like the kid like being around me. Right. Like, we do everything. I teach somebody to draw and everything. My soul is just really, really like real personal. To put that imprint on, it's kind of like a blank slate. Like you're really filling out and you're making, you're becoming someone else's influence. Like you're a role model. Exactly. You are, you're a mentor. You're an uncle. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, just, I just had my niece last year, man. It's, oh. it's amazing just to see the, the progression of things. Because at first, and I can't wait till she starts talking oh. so I can have conversations. Because that's how I think I'll chime in more so. Just, man, we can talk and I can see where your mind's at, get questions, see what what things are going on in your mind so you can shape that and try to instill those uh, those behaviors and those ways of thinking and that philosophy of how to really just enjoy your life. And it's beautiful to see something so simple be, you know, be simple, just exactly. be exactly as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very true. And that's what it is. Um, based on after he was born, um, got a whole new perspective on stuff. Started creating different work. I feel like, like, oh, man, you had the conversation uh, about uh, dark artwork. I feel honestly, I feel like I was somebody where I was a kid. Man, it wasn't work like this. It was okay. some other stuff. It wasn't really bright and, and and positive, or you didn't. It didn't come off as such, even though it may have been just kind of deeply <laughs> underneath. <laughs> yeah, deep, yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from the you know from the pits, I'll okay. say that from the pits, I'll give you that. But uh. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It was just my interpretation of that reality that I lived at that moment in time. Okay. And I feel like it's weird and it's strange to me to create. It still can be uh, like that, but in the sense of very colorful mm -hmm. and very pleasant to the eye. But I feel like my structure and my characters and my subject in which I create is more childlike and more simple and palatable. And I really feel like that is getting, I'm going towards my new niche and my new thing of what I'm trying to do in life. And yeah, thanks to him, I got this whole new perspective on all these different things. Yeah. What do you think that people will, what do you think people miss when they first see your art? If they look at it and at first glance, they may not catch what? At first glance? Or may not get what from it? 
I believe uh, when people first see my work, they won't necessarily get <laughs> what it is. Okay. And the only reason I say that is because uh, obviously when you look at it, it's very detailed. And, um, and it's the reason why everything is detailed. Because life is detailed, you know. Very. And this right here, uh, this method of creation right here is something called a dreamscape. It's when you fall asleep and when you wake up. But this method is a more composite drawn dreamscape. So uh, basically when it comes out to dreamscapes, um, my idea and how I kind of interpret a dream is you have highlights inside of dreams and you have no highlights inside of dreams. Okay. So when you enter a dream, you remember only certain things. But then you remember that you was at the dream and you remember that it was a detailed thing, but you don't remember anything in the detail. You just remember that it was a dream. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Tell me, um, tell me about the importance of dreams because being that that's a big part of your, your artwork, what is the importance of dreams to you? No, man. <laughs> Dreams to me kept me going. I ain't gonna lie. Like uh, it was weird because growing up, I could have been like so, uh, like a whole different uh, another person. You know what I'm saying? We all can choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all could have been someone else. Correct? Yeah, exactly. I felt like when I was when I dreamed or was dreaming, I could always be the person I was wanting to be. Okay. So I would use my dreams growing up as a sense of like uh, stories. And as a sense of like, it's weird. It, as a sense yeah. of like a whole different other path that I feel like other people couldn't really do. So when I draw, uh, when I would dream about something like one of my biggest things, one of the things I really want to do in the future is, and I do right now, is animate a potential uh, anime or you know anything or film or so that's what I want, truly want to do. That's the whole method of me what we're doing right now. So that's the goal right now. That's yeah. that's the the mountain in the distance mm -hmm. working your way towards the top. Exactly. And ironically, this thing that I'm creating is the whole reason why I draw inside of the first place. So that's all I thought about. Mm -hmm. So when, when I fell asleep in these dreams and how important they are to me, they are the foundation of what I create. They, they literally are that foundation. I so your dreams are your ideal reality or the ideal character and person that you want to be. So as you wake up and start working towards that, it's like you dream you're closer to that ideal reality that you want to have. You wake up and you start creating towards that. And these are the things that are getting closer to what you're dreaming, like what you have in mind. Uh, everything has a meaning. Everything is created for a reason. I mean, just like outside of life, we all do this for a reason. We all are part of civilization for a reason, you know what I'm saying? People may not like it, but you know what I'm saying? This is the first piece of many other pieces that I have that I'm making. And once you see them all together, you will understand who this individual is. Okay, so you're giving, so each piece is a reason along the explanation of the purpose. Oh, exactly, exactly. What would you say, what is your most, like, what is your most recurring thoughts? We are what we think about and what we do most often and most frequently. It's like you're always thinking about this and you're eventually going to grow into something similar to that. What is, like, your most recurring thought? I feel like the, my most recurring thought as of right now it's actually, uh, I'm trying to sound sappy or anything, but I would say it's like, it's literally my nephew. I mean, like, uh, I want to see him achieve things and then my brother never could. We, we never thought we would when we was young. Mm -hmm. I want him to be that one that kind of bridged the gap for my family and, you know, and just do something that he really wants to do in life. And I want him to be, you know, on a certain level in life that I wasn't at when I was his age. So like literally, when I create, I used to create for myself my whole entire life. So it feels really, really, really good to create to somebody else. It sounds like your most recurrent thought is to be an inspiration, man. And that's <laughs> great. That's a, that's a great thing. Like, man, I want to be the best person I can be so that this person can be the best person they can be. And I think that's a lot of what we have to be. You know, that's a part of everyone being happiest. If you are, your happiness is a benefit to other people to see that. Like your positivity and what you put out into the world, it means you, your energy, your vibe, you know, uh, you know, your greetings. Like when you see people, the connections that you have, those are benefits to other people because they pass those things along. They pay those things forward. Like if you, if I'm in a bad mood or I'm feeling down and I surround myself with happy people, how long can I stay where I'm at? You know, you kind of fall into that fold. So. I mean, that's, like I said, that's great. <laughs> I, like, I just, just want to be an inspiration, just want to be happy, just want to be. And that's a very simple uh, mindset and mentality to have. I think the most funniest thing is uh, something when I was a little kid. 
I just thought of this. When I was a kid growing up, I would always see the shows, you know, and I would like, watch TV with my friends. And I'd be like, oh, I want to be that character. I want to be that person right there. And then they'd be like, oh, you can't be that character right here. And this is something big because I was like, it may be small to other people, but it was big to me when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, you can't be that character right there because you're black or like, you're this. You know what I'm saying? But you're kids. You know what I'm saying? So your perception of color isn't really that. Like, what do you mean by that? You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm not saying I want to be his color. I'm saying I want to do what he's doing. He's the leader, so I want to be that person. It is. You don't know exactly how far reaching your influence can be once you've done something. Because you are some of the influences that you've had to be able to make this. Cool. And then other people, you know, whether it's your nephew, whether it's strangers, friends, family, or whoever it may be, see this and they take from it what they will. They may not make it, they may not make art, but then they see this and say, you know what, this is a, this may be my symbol or my means of reaching out for my own growth. To say, you know what, I need to read more, I need to invest more into myself, more into my relationships more into my own happiness or more into whatever the case may be because I need to, to leave where I'm at now and go into something better. I know that there's better for me. 